Welcome back to Kosi's Arsenal Podcast. My name is Kosi. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in all parts of the world. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a brand new video. These are the six things we learned from Arsenal 3, Liverpool 2 over the weekend. Many lessons to learn from, uh, I think, by Liverpool. And for me, Jagan Klopp, this is the game. That was the ultimate test to tell him his team needs a lot of reinforcements this season. Arsenal as well, we had so many lessons to learn. I picked up the six major ones. But in the comment section, let's com continue the conversation how many things did you learn from that game apart from the deluded side of Arsenal great Arsenal too good we, are, we don't have any uh, deficiencies talk to me realistically do you think there, um, there are any important lessons you took away from that game number one for me Bukayo Saka is back now at the beginning of the season I said I talked about it and I said players like Pate, players like Bukayo Saka are not yet up to and uh, up there are not yet up to the standards they have actually set last season Saka was our player of the year last campaign Thomas Partey was our most important player last campaign as well. But when you, th when, when, you, when you watch them in the earlier stages of the season this season, they were not actually convincing. I wasn't convinced by Saka. I wasn't convinced by Partey as well. But yesterday, it, that was a very big message by Bukai Saka to tell us and announce himself as now back and part of the team. Two goals and he was involved in every goal we scored on the pitch. Right from the first goal, the second one that he scored, and the penalty as well. So I'm really, really pleased with Bukayo Saka because, you know, he just allows us to have that another outlet um, apart from Gabriel Martinelli. At the beginning of the season, it was Martinelli and Gabriel Jesus. They were the two um, outlets we had. And of course, that is very easy to block. The moment you put Martinelli and Gabriel Jesus out of the game, you've actually blocked all the channels for Arsenal. But now, Saka is back three goals now so far this campaign and this is the big thing he has now announced himself as a big game player all his games this campaign have actually come in the big games against the big boys against manchester united he scored against liverpool he scored a breast so that is again another uh, you know big thing to talk about saka is announcing himself as an all-round game player not only in these small games against leeds united um uh, where he scores braces and hat tricks, but also against Manchester United, also against Liverpool. Because you look, last campaign, like I said, City only dropped uh, points against four teams, and only two in the top four. That means you have to pick up points either. Uh, whether you're playing the big boys or you're playing all these team, the small teams, you have to pick up points. And you, you need to have those characters, you need to have those big players that can actually play in the big game. So for me, uh, Saka is back and I, I tipped him to score around 10 goals this campaign i won't be very surprised if he scores around 13 to 15 goals in this campaign the same as gabriel martinelli so that was one thing i looked at simikas had a very very troubled time he was really really troubled because the thing with bukai saka and Mikel Arteta system is he, uh, you know it allows saka to be our most advanced player on the pitch that is what it does. And that means uh, that creates a lot of problems uh, for any backline in the world. Because Saka is always up there. You cannot, you, you literally can't come uh, up to the center line. You cannot, you know, he doesn't give you that uh, opportunity to come up to the center line and dominate possession. He's always high up the pitch. Um, of course, Gabriel Jesus drops inside. Gabriel Martinelli also drops inside as well to help with uh, the defending and carrying the ball. It is only one player, that is Bukayo Saka, who doesn't have to, you know, come and do a lot of defending. So, what he does is always giving us that outlet and you saw it in the in the in the first goal when when we picked up the ball the outlet was Bukayo Saka releases uh, the ball to Martin Odegaard Odegaard releases um, Martinelli and you could see Martinelli is making an you know is, is, is kind of making an overlapping run he's not already high up the pitch but he's running into the penalt area so Saka he is back and we're gonna enjoy a lot of the football we're gonna enjoy um many moments from Bukayo Saka this you know, this campaign because if he's playing like this against Liverpool against Manchester uh, Manchester United just imagine if he's on his day against Leeds United just imagine if he's on his day uh against Bournemouth against this the likes of Brentford clubs that allow Arsenal to play clubs like allow Arsenal to um create you know lots of lots and lots of chances he's going to be a better player and he's gonna be a star the moment for me he signs that 200k contract and he continues to play well right if it doesn't affect him in any way shape or form the new contract is going to be a star man for us now this campaign. Number two, Gabriel Martinelli is a nightmare. Trent Alexander Arnold, I've been wa watching Talk Sport uh, on YouTube. You can watch them as well. They do have some interesting debates and conversations. And 
I think it's Jason Candy. Is it Jason Candy uh, who says that uh, Trent Alexander Arnold is a League One defender? And to be honest, um, look, Trent Alexander Arnold is not one of the best defenders in the world. Um, combined with Jordan Anderson, you don't get the defensive quality uh, you would love or you would get from one player uh, as Ben White or Tomiyasu. For me, combined, uh, they don't even reach in half of what Tomiyasu can do defensively. But Martinelli is another gem. Martinelli is another prototype uh, of an attacker. The only thing I've seen uh, uh, close to Martinelli in the Premier League uh, this campaign is Alan St. Maxima. The relentlessness, um, he's always running throughout the 90 minutes. He can, you cannot push him off the ball. He's very small, by the way, but you cannot bully him off the ball. And I'm, I'm looking at him go into tight situations. I'm looking at him going into very, very small spaces and coming out on top with the ball. And I'm like, how does he even do this? How does he even do this? Because we might say Trent doesn't do well defensively. We might say Trent was uh, a shambles. Look at Martinelli and the whole Premier League season. What he has done to defenders. The whole Premier League season. Best dribbler in the Premier League right now, statistically. For me, the best entertaining footballer by a far, by a, far, by a mile in the Premier League. Who is entertaining? Who is entertaining to watch um, in the Premier League? Even last campaign, when he came onto the pitch and asked no one not to actually pick up the results, Gabriel Martinelli was entertaining. So for me, he's up there in, the la you know, in, in that category uh, of the likes of Vinicius in terms of playing entertaining football. If he can get the numbers, that is what the likes of Vinicius are doing. They're getting the numbers at Real Madrid. They're getting the numbers on the big stage in the UEFA Champions League. And that is the difference between Vinicius, Rafinha, and Martinelli. Vinicius gets the numbers. Martinelli not yet there. But he is amazing he's an i you know he's a nightmare to all center backs a nightmare to all full backs in the world you don't want a player who's going to be running at you 90 minutes you don't want a player who's going to be uh you know trying to you know, come at you 90 minutes without resting and it is somehow subjective now that arsenal playing more through the left hand side rather than the right it gives a lot of um uh, you know, space for Saka to run into in behind, and it just takes some, you know, attention of Bukayo Saka. It just allows, uh, you know, Saka to have that free space. But Gabriel Martinelli is a nightmare. Trent Alexander Ronald, Jalen Anderson, they should be embarrassed for me. Um, Liverpool, you are almost champions last campaign. This campaign, you cannot be this bad. They really, really cannot be this bad. They feel cheated. They'll feel um, it was a little bit unfair and all that. But I'm gonna say this. Liverpool must, you know, they should have done better, especially uh, in that key battle against Gabriel Martinelli, where Martinelli came on top. Um, even when Jordan Nelson did deep inside, tried to defend against Martinelli with, uh, with Trent, things were actually going very, very bad uh, for them. Number three, we are the real deal. And now we are the best of the rest. I said this yesterday um, in my match reaction, in the, my second video uh, of the match reaction. And I said, right now, we are the real deal right now. We are the best of the rest. If I look at all these other teams in the Premier League, there is something they are lacking. Be it Chelsea, be it Manchester United, be it Tottenham Hotspur, there is something they are lacking, and that is consistency. Now, there is no doubt uh, Chelsea and Graham Potter, they have that quality. They have that, um, they have that, they have, they have that you know, brilliance. Uh, in the manager, in the managerial, uh, you know, in, in the managerial area, they have that brilliance, but can they stay consistent right i think what chelsea also don't have is that cohesion uh, with a new manager with a few new players a couple of players have left the club and do that they don't have that cohesion and you feel it will take at least one full season for graham Potter to come and say now i have uh the team i want now i have you guys playing the way we want i, I see chelsea playing very well uh, uh they're picking up points but at some point they will crumble. Now, they have a very a very big test coming on in, a, in one and a half weeks. That is Manchester United. So, if United, uh, if, if Chelsea can't beat Manchester United convincingly, then I will say uh, they are probably as well the best of the rest, right? But for now, we are the best of the rest. We are the real deal. Apart from Manchester City, I don't see any other team that can pick up points consistently. I don't see other, any other team that can pick up points playing well. You know, it's, it's another story playing well and consistently picking up points but Arsenal right now we are playing well we are consistently picking up points and we are entertaining our fans and the rest of the Premier League so I think 
anyone can now agree with that with me anyone can now agree with um any pundits out there who say arsenal are the real deal we are going to give manchester city a run for their money on the title now i don't think it's gonna be a, a 10 point gap on the title if manchester city uh run away i don't think it's going to be a 15 uh, point gap it might be around seven to six if um if manchester city in, in in any way shape or form run away right uh, th that is it so our fixtures our upcoming fixtures are a little bit easier leeds southampton and nottingham forest those are, those are the games we have to play um in october y you you fancy arsenal to pick up all nine points from those wins and if manchester city fail probably to beat liverpool we will have to support liverpool obviously in this one so if manchester city fail to beat liverpool that just that just gives us some breathing space on top probably if liverpool can pick up a point in that game uh because it's kind of uh now uh, a rivalry some kind of uh, new derby that has uh, been created in the modern game that means arsenal will be above uh manchester city by a difference of four points that gives that gives us some breath breathing space as we go into um november where we'll have to play uh chelsea as well so for me um right now we are the real deal and we are the best of the rest number four Mikel has developed into a man and a real manager so i say this uh yesterday that Mikel arteta is going to be tested throughout the 38 games in this campaign he has already failed one test um and uh and one nine and passed nine uh, and passed the other eight but against jagen klopp against antonio conte that was special that was absolutely special because these are two tests that you have to pass and they're coming one after the other they're, they're coming you know uh, successively one after the other so i looked at uh, i looked at Mikel in that game he wasn't a, you know he wasn't a, that, that naive manager uh we are 2-2 um so i i you know start defending right away he kept his calm even when liverpool uh scored the goal he was very calm didn't rush to make the substitutions like he did against manchester united kept calm and he said anything that happens in this game i'm going to let the game play out for me if he had done that against manchester united we could have walked away with the point but the harsh and the rush uh, substitutions in that game you know it was kind of a panic he panicked in this game so as a real manager as a real man you've got to let your team if you trust your decisions you trust your tactics you trust your, your team you you need to let them you know battle right you need to let them uh you know go out there try to do whatever you've told them to do and against liverpool thinking about two different game plans inward game that was special that was absolutely special so uh Mikel Arteta, in my opinion deserves a lot of credit in that game many people have not seen anyone talk about him i've not seen anyone uh give him the credit everyone saying martinelli saka and all that but you look at um you know you look at the possession cornerstones that Mikel Arteta has created in the team you look at the unity you look at the passing combinations that is um and, and you can see everything is straight off the training ground um Pierre america Bamiang was um speaking about ateta and he says ateta doesn't want the big names right in his dressing room i think ateta doesn't want disruptions in the, in, in his dressing room rather than the big names right because many of uh, signing gabriel is currently um in my opinion you're uh, you're signing a potential big name Alexander Zichenko, you're signing a potential big name, right? But the likes of Aubameyang and creating all those, uh, you know, unnecessary disruptions, it what sh is what shows me that um, Ateta is now a big man. He's now a big manager. When he says this is what should be done, and you don't follow the rules, you're out of the door. You're definitely um, out of the door. And you know, it, we have also seen he can think outside the box. Playing Tomiyasu at left back instead of Kieran Tierney, he can think outside the box he can beat other managers by uh simply surprising them simply being the better manager and you know br you know giving us uh the better tactics number five takira tomiyasu has no position he cannot play in this world and this is an appreciation uh you know tweet and twist for uh for takira tomiyasu oh, i've looked at him play in different positions um, I've looked at him play at center back. I've looked at him play in a back three. I've looked at him play at right back. And we can all agree his best position 
is at right back. His posi best position would be in a back three, on the right hand side of a back three. So if you risk him play, if you, if you risk playing him at left back against Salah, that is scary. That is absolutely scary. If yeah, if if it had gone um, in favor of Liverpool and Salah bull, uh, bullied uh, Tomiyasu, I think Mikelata would have been uh, smoked. We would have sm smoked and uh, we would have really, really uh, been angry with Mikel Arteta. But that decision to play him there is brave. And Takira Tomiyasu to have that performance against Salah at left back, it is absolutely phenomenal. It's absolutely very, very huge. And that's why I'm, I'm saying there is no way you can there is no way you place him on the pitch and he doesn't do well it's just one of those players that um are there to play for the manager they're there to play which whatever the manager tells them to do they will do that very very versatile and i think ainsley martinez must be looking at uh, this arsenal side right now and if he looks at tomiyasu that is the true definition of versatile it means you can play in one in, in more than one position consistently and you can do well, right? A the pr my problem with Ainsley is he wants to play in certain positions and he doesn't want to play in other positions. The manager feels he should be playing at right back and Ainsley feels he should be playing in midfield. And when he plays in midfield, he's a shambles. When he plays at right back because he doesn't want to play there, uh, he's a shambles. But Takeru Tomiyasu literally plays everywhere everywhere on that pitch and he plays well uh and he just keeps on giving you those vibes that whenever any player comes actually if gabriel Magales keeps on exposing himself um you know having those mistakes per 90 we should try takiro tomiyasu at left center back good in the air defensively solid very calm on the ball in position can receive the ball under pressure and his passing is also uh, passing accuracy is lit as well. So, in my opinion, Gabriel almost c uh, caused the penalty against Liverpool. He brought a penalty against uh, Tottenham Hotspur. So, you have a mistake in him, almost per, uh, per 90. And I've already spoken about that. And you remember the, the goal against Ale uh, uh, you know, Alexander Mitrovic? Again, that is another mistake. How about you try Takeru Tomiyasu as left centre-back? Yeah, I know... Um, his partnership with William Saliba is uh, great. Gabriel's partnership and William Saliba is great. But Takeru Tomiyasu is less prone to era, errors, is less prone to mistakes that will lead to a goal than Gabriel Magales. So for me, Takeru Tomiyasu needs more game time. And since he can play anywhere, literally, virtually anywhere, why don't we try to play him uh, at center back with William Saliba and see how it actually plays out? Lastly, we exposed the rubbish out in Liverpool. So, Jagan Klopp said, we have to defend the rubbish out of every team. We have to defend the rubbish out of um, our opponents. I think what Arsenal did yesterday was exposing the rubbish in Liverpool. Saka, sorry, sorry, Salah is garbage. Trent is rubbish. Virgil van Dijk is rubbish. And so many of their players, including Jordan Nelson, are absolute garbage. And that is what we did yesterday. It was all about coming into the game, exposing the rotten areas in that Liverpool eleven, just just exposing them. Two mistakes from uh, from Trent, two mistakes from uh, Simicas, so many mistakes from Virgil Van Dijk, so many mistakes from uh, from Henderson, and it's about playing the real quality. Actually, I think our second half performance is not very far away from the first half performance of Brighton against Liverpool. Just expose them. That is. That is all you have to do. Expose them. Make sure that whenever you are, you, you, you are in possession, you're targeting their weaker areas. John Anderson is embarrassing. Absolutely embarrassing. Trent is shocking. Absolutely shocking. Um, Mohamed Salah, I don't know. He's, you know. he's abysmal. And the rest of their defensive activity is an absolute shambles. So we are, we are on the mission to expose the weakness in every team this campaign. Have you thought about this? That Arsenal could win nine out of the possible nine fixtures in October. We have won three out of nine. Definitely, we can win another two. Even if we win six out of nine and draw the other three, I'll be contented. Because for me, there is no reason for us to beat PSV and Hoven. No reason. The moment we beat Bodo Glint, if we can't do that, uh, beat Bodo Glint on Thursday, 
we will be nine points out of nine in our in our group that means you pick up a point against um you you you, you pick up two points against psv and hoven and then beat, uh, beat fc zurich when they come at the emery stadium it's over right uh, the group is over so no need to focus much on the europa league right M our focus should be on these five games in the premier league leeds southampton and nottingham forest all those games are, are gettable and they're gonna be a very very different test because you think about southampton uh they love to play they, they love to be on the ball so literally it's going to be arsenal and uh, an end to end game arsenal are, are likely to win uh the possession battle leeds united are porous in midfield they will let you score they, they will let you have chances but they're also uh, very deadly on the break so um again i'm thinking if it comes to game control if it comes to uh, having the bigger position arsenal can come up on top nottingham forest just have so many problems that they need to sort them out before they play arsenal at the end of october otherwise it doesn't look good it really really doesn't go look good and of course arsenal will be playing that game knowing it is our chance to win before we enter the another north london derby chelsea versus arsenal so with all that i thought we, we are i think we are still on a very very good run i think we are deservingly uh on top of the table like pep said there is only one team that has been better than manchester city this season that is arsenal and surprisingly we are still better than them even after playing spurs and liverpool back to back i speak to you in the next one as we dive into the latest news around us and especially your favorite transfer news